okay, we've just completed our statement of changes in equity. We are going to move on to the balance sheet. The balance sheet, I'd like you to lay out a little bit differently from how we've laid out the first couple of statements. I'd like you to think of it as a, a landscape. Is that right? Yeah, not portrait, not up and down. I, I, I often encourage my students to like twist their paper and have it so a little bit wider. Here's how I'm going to show you how to prepare a balance sheet. Again, I would caution you with all this stuff. In terms of content, I'm very confident what I'm saying. In terms of formatting, different profs might like to see something a little bit different from what I am telling you to do. So make sure you're following whatever your instructor says, but what I'm saying isn't wrong. It just might be different stylistic uh, choice. Okay, so we got a name of our company, Sherry's Shuttles. The name of the financial statement, again, I've been calling it balance sheet kind of casually. The formal name is the statement of financial position. If you called it a balance sheet in my class, I would not have a problem with that. But again, I caution you that different strokes for different profs. Uh, now, not for the year ended. Balance sheets, we just date. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Some props might want you to say as at or as of, but just dating is absolutely acceptable. So I'm going to date it December 31st, 2017. Again, when I'm wrapping this up, when I'm doing my next video with ratios, I'm going to explain why we date them in the way we do. Why didn't we say for the year ended like we did for the other two? I'll explain that. Now, remember what a balance sheet is. We want to make sure assets equals liabilities plus shareholders equity. So on the left, and I'll just draw a dotted line down the middle here. On the left, and the dotted line means not really a line there, right? It's just something I'm using as I show you. On the left, I write assets, and I'm going to list all my assets. On the right, I write liabilities. And I'm going to list all of my liabilities. And about halfway down the page, I'll write shareholders equity. And below that, I'm going to list all of my shareholders equity accounts. So let's start listing assets. Now, when we get into listing, I really want to distinguish between the current and the non-current or long-term. So everything that's not highlighted now is what we're looking at. Uh, in terms of assets, I've got current assets of cash. Uh, any other current assets? Yeah, accounts receivable and office supplies. In terms of non-current assets, I've got buildings and equipment. So I've got quite a few assets to worry about here. Um, the order we want to list them in is from most to least current. So the most current to the most long term. So the most current of our current assets is cash, always cash. Cash always comes first. You can look at your favorite company's balance sheet and you will see that. And we're going to be no exception. Cash is a very current asset. So our cash here was, I think it was five grand, but I'm gonna have to go back up. Sorry for always going up and down like this. Yeah, it was five. I'm leaving room to do two columns here. Uh, our n other two current assets were over here. They were office supplies and accounts receivable. We gotta figure out order. Generally, accounts receivable before office supplies. And if you think about it, if accounts receivable I'm going to collect in 30 days, will we go through all of our office supplies in 30 days? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but accounts receivable generally before office supplies. And as I recall, they were a thousand dollars and five hundred dollars, giving us total current assets of six thousand five hundred. All right, now we've got to move into our long term assets or non current assets. Let's go up and see what we've got. We have buildings. 
and we have equipment. So buildings are 100, equipment is 30. Again, I got to say, what's more current, what's more long term? I would argue that buildings will last, you know, 20 to 40 years, equipment will last 5 to 10 years. So equipment is more current than our buildings, equipment will be listed first. We can categorize these as our non-current assets, but actually more often they get categorized as this. Property, plant, and equipment. Sorry, I know I've squeezed that in on you. Property, plant, and equipment is our categorization here, and it's just sort of saying here's all of our tangible, we call them capital assets, and that's another category you might hear, capital assets. I'll call them property, plant, and equipment, though, and that's land, building, and equipment. So equipment comes first. Can't remember how much, 30 grand, I think. Yeah, 30, and the building was 100. Okay, so let's list those out. Equipment and building, and that was 30 grand for the equipment, 100 grand for the building, 30 plus 100 is 130 grand, and that is our total property, plant, and equipment. Again, your prof might be a stickler and make you write that out. I'm just abbreviating it to save my hand a little bit. So our grand total for assets, if I have my current assets and then my long-term assets, which are composed of property, plant, and equipment, 6,500 plus 130. Of course, the total there is 136. 500 that is my total assets double underline any bottom line dollar sign at the top of each column and at the bottom line of the statement you might say well what about this equipment does that get a dollar sign nope again we look at the statement as a whole and just dollar sign at the top and bottom of each column uh, the other thing is your prof might make different stylistic choices from me and your prof might say nope dollar sign at the top of equipment as well I disagree I put them at the just the top of each column and at the bottom line let's move over to our liabilities our liabilities included a bank loan uh, what else and accounts payable and wages payable there we go so accounts payable wages payable and bank loan Again, we list them from most current to most long term. Current liabilities were accounts payable, that will come first. Then wages payable. Then we'll have total current. I'm squeezing here because I didn't leave a lot of room. Liabilities. Then our long-term liability, which is just a bank loan. Then a total liabilities. Okay, so our current liabilities were again, accounts payable 2,200, wages payable 1,600, our bank loan was 45 grand. 2,200, 1,600, 45 grand. So again, 2200 plus 1600 is 3800. That's our total current liabilities. We only had one kind of long-term liability. We might even want to categorize that as long-term liability. It's our bank loan of 45,000. 3800 plus 45,000 is 48,800. No double underlines here. It's not the bottom line. We're still going to continue down the page. That's it for that part. Now on to equity. Our equity was common shares of 60 and retained earnings of 27.7. We just take the ending balance, not the beginning, not what's showing in the question for our equity. We take it from our statement of changes in equity, 60,000 and 27,700. Sixty thousand plus twenty seven seven is eighty seven thousand seven hundred. This is our total shareholders 
equity. So the bottom line, our total liabilities and shareholders equity, 48,800 plus 87,700, 136, 500. Our balance sheet balances assets do indeed equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. I need dollar signs at the top of each column and next to the bottom line of the statement. Again, you may have a prof that says put the dollar sign beside common shares as well. I don't do that, but they are certainly well within their rights to. It's just a stylistic choice here. Okay, we're going to leave our balance sheet here. We're going to do some ratios and just some interpretation and overall comments on the financial statements in our next and final video. Stay tuned.